All right, good morning, 9 a.m. service. Paki kumusta naman sa inyong mga seatmates uh, quickly, no? Paki give them a high five, a fist bump, a handshake. Uh, we're so glad to have you here with us this morning. Um, for those of you who are here for the first time, again, or, or we missed out uh, last week, we kicked off our new series called Walk That Talk. And this is, this is a series basically that's all about uh, the Word of God. And our goal for this series is basically na at the end of it or, or, or throughout this series, we will increase in our desire to read, to soar, and pray the Word of God. So before we get to the, the text today, just a quick recap of what we've learned uh, last week. If you remember, Pastor Archie came in here and preached a powerful word about uh, Psalms 119. And by the way, uh, Pastor Archie is not here at the moment. He's attending some meetings in Manila. Okay, but he'll be here next week. All right, so uh, last week when we kicked off this series, we, when we started the series, this series, we're in the first few verses of Psalms 119. And throughout this series, we'll be looking at different sections of this psalm. Because this psalm is the longest psalm in the Bible. And in fact, it's the longest chapter in the Bible. Okay, it's on Psalms 119. And in the first week, we've learned that the blessed life is a scripture-formed and scripture-oriented life. And throughout this psalms, basically, we would get to see how important scripture is. How much it, how much it, how much it can truly benefit us. How much it's truly integral for our lives. So for this week, we'll go, to, we'll go naman to Psalms 119 verses 9 to 16. That's the second section after the first few verses from last week. So if you, if you have your Bibles with you, can you turn it to Psalms 119, verses 9 to 16. And when you're there, can I request everyone to please stand in reverence of the word as we read of it all together. Verse 9, okay? it, it says there, How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you, let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Let me just pray for all of us. Father, we thank you today that we could read your word here to God. And Lord, may you help us understand and grow in our appreciation of your word to God. Lord, after this, Lord God, we would desire and long all the more to store your word in our hearts, Lord God. And Lord God, may we learn, Lord God, how to do so, Lord God. May we treasure your word as the psalmist wrote in this psalms, Lord God. Lord, we thank you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let me take your, take your seats, everyone. So as I said earlier, we're in Psalms 119, and if you, if you read through this psalm, especially coming from last week, or if you've done some advanced reading on this chapter, you would, you would see and know that there are many words that talks about Scripture. Okay, you have different words. Okay, if, if, if I could display the whole passage right here, but you have, you have words like word, commandments, statutes, rules, testimonies, precepts. You have all these different terms, and although they mean slightly different things, okay, like like, uh, uh, like, like, like the law means God's instruction, or the statutes means what, is, what the divine lawgiver God has laid down. Ultimately, all these terms mean scripture, right? All, they all point to scripture. So, so it's all about talking scripture. Now, last week, again, we, we talked about how blessed is a life of someone who is formed and oriented with the scripture. Now, here in verse 9, in the second stanza, in the second section, if, if you will, of this song, or this psalm, the psalmist man turns his focus to the purifying power of God's word and asks an important question, okay? Psalm 9 starts with this question. How can a young man keep his way pure? Now, even if young man, this question is as relevant and important uh, to, to young men, old men, women, and women, uh, women as well. Okay, so whatever is your background, whether you're young, you're old, or not so young, bang, this question is still important. How can we keep our way pure? Now, the answer to that is really placed immediately, right after, uh, right after the question is, uh, is posed. But before we get to the question, before we get to the hows and answering this, let's take a look at purity muna, okay? But when, when it says pure here, it, it doesn't just mean sexual purity, but holiness in general, okay? Being blameless. The word pure here means to be clean or clear. And before we get to the hows, we need to answer, why do we need to be pure? I don't want big deal in your question. Because the psalmist then goes extensively, okay, how he, 
how he can live a pure and holy life. But we need to ask first, why do we need to live a pure and holy life? Why do we need to stay pure? Anong kailangan man? Okay, why do we need to do so? Now, when we look at things, uh, mga f- things around us or the things that we have, when it, come, when it comes to purity, we, we all want purity in, in, in our possessions or when it comes to our food. Like, for example, if you, if you eat food, diba? Wala din sa inyo yung ganahan nga na yung hugaw ang food ninyo. If you go to a restaurant and you, you're about to eat that silog that you want to eat, then makita niyo mo, uy, na may, na may, na, 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 na legs sa cockroach. Okay, would you eat that? No, of course not, diba? What, 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 if, what if the waiter tells you, ah, ma'am, sir, uska leg, uska, uska, yeah, uska leg rabito sa cockroach. Gamay rabito na, ma'am. Okay na, ma'am. Would you still eat that? Of course not. Okay? If, if I were to serve you right now a glass of water and I tell you, uh, you know what? Gibutan na ako one drop of Zonrox in mong basong tubig. Would you drink that? But you know what? Katong 99% anak tubig lang na siya. Would you drink that? Of course not. No matter how small it may be, when something is impure, it is presented to us, is offered to us, we don't want to eat it. Diba? Would you buy something like soap or alcohol that says, you know what? This product, it kills 25% of germs. <laughs> Of course not. We would we'd want things to be pure. What about in the area of our relationships? What if someone wants to marry you? You know what? I want to marry you. Okay? Now, I will be with you for the rest of your life except for one night a week. One night a year. Kadang one night, I will go somewhere. Bahala na. Of course not. You wouldn't want that kind of relationship. We want things to be pure around us. Now, if in our attitudes when it comes to our food, atong mga gamit nato, in relationships, all the more when it comes to the things of God. We want or we need to be pure because we serve or worship a holy God, a pure and holy God. First Peter chapter 1, verse 15 to 16, it says here, But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. When we talk about having or staying a pure and holy life, it's not, it's not because ginan kas victory group leader ni mo, or ginan kas pastor, or because mo may trends at church, buhaton po na ako. No. We, we want to stay a pure and holy life because God deserves it. Because we serve and worship a pure and holy God. But it wouldn't make sense to claim that, you know what? I serve. I want to worship this holy God. And it's st- ang lifestyle na to, daily holy, daily pure. In fact, nothing impure, okay, or, or nothing, or there's nothing impure that can stand in the presence of God. If you if you look through the Bible in the Old Testament, okay, in, in the temple of, of, of the Jews, okay, there's a place there called the Holy of Holies. And in that part of the temple, only the high priest could go in at least like once a year. And he needed to do certain rituals to make sure he was ritually clean or pure or holy. And not everyone could just go in there. It signifies God's holiness. And man's sinfulness, man's impurity. The dili ang basta basta maka enter dito, maka be in the presence of God ang man. It took something to break down that those walls, that barrier that separates us from God. That separates us from God. So we need to understand, church, that because we serve a holy God, we are to be holy. Okay, can you stand your submit for a while? Live. Oh, you are to be holy. Okay, we are to be holy. Now, of course. This presents some challenges, which is why the psalmist wrote, wrote, no, how can a young man keep his way pure? Back then, in their, in their time, there would have been challenges, things he needed to overcome. He needed help. The same thing with us today. Trying to live a pure and holy life can be challenging. If you've been a Christian for, the longest, for a long time, you would know the difficulties, the challenges of having to live a pure and holy life. Maybe, maybe because our society and culture have a different set of values, Okay, sa to, uh, you know, this is God's standard. This is what we have to uh, subscribe to or follow. Sa, sa world, mora ni, lahi. Perhaps, you know, trying to live a pure, pure in whole life is difficult now because of social media. What We are constantly bombarded of something different, of something that is not pure, not holy. The difficulties presented or, you know, the desire, rather, the desperation of the psalmist when he wrote, how can a young man keep his way pure is as relevant today as it was in his time. Now, so how can we guard or keep our way pure? How can we stay and live a pure and whole life? Now, the answer presented here, of course, is by guarding it. Or I can never say guarding it. Okay, by guarding it. Now, I want to show these other translations okay, in the Bible, at the NLT and NIV, because they expound a lot more what we, what we, what we mean by guarding it. Uh, it says here in, in the NLT, what, 
by obeying your word, the word of God. In the NIV, by living according to your word. In the, in the King James Version naman, uh, by taking heed thereto according to thy word. So the psalmist wrote that for us to keep our ways pure, we are to guard it according to the word of God. Or in or some translations, to obey his word, to live according to his word. Or in King, in King James Version, to take heed. To take heed means to pay attention to. Okay, mamino ka closely. Mag, 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 you will give your full attention there. In other words, we are to guard our lives. Our, 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 we are, for us to keep our ways pure, we need the word of God. If we want to stay pure, we must take heed of the word of God. The foundation for a morally pure life is found in God's word. To guard our, to, to guard our lives using God's word is kind of like this, okay? Uh, last month, uh, nag, uh, nag ibalag nag, nag founders week ang Siliman and how many of you were able to, what, to go there sa ibalag after two week two years but a uh, few few okay but whoo ganan ara but but nag ibalag okay after two years on site physical nga hibalag and for for those of you who who know or familiar di ba every time mag hibalag that is something com- that is something a common experience and that is magulan di ba mag mad mag magkamadi ang hibalag nga site and and, and what's interesting that there were some students uh, 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 now we've seen there that because of the muddy ground, they would do this to their shoes. Okay, they would put plastics on shoes nila. They would wrap it in plastic, especially if puti ang shoes. <laughs> so they would put plastic so they could walk in the muddy ground without getting their shoes dirty. Now I'm sh- sharing this photo for all of us to to sort of to point of illustrate in the same way. Uh, this is what it means to guard uh, to guard it to guard our li- lives according to the word of God. We need God's word to keep us pure and holy. Much like that plastic that protects the shoes or is trying to protect that, protect that shoes from getting mud into the shoes, we need something to keep us pure and holy. Dili kaya nga ato ng own, atong own willpower, atong own abilities. No, we need the Word of God. Now, again, the foundation of a morally pure life is found in God's Word. So let's take a look closely naman, okay? How is God's Word beneficial for purity? All right? Firstly, God's Word shows us the standard of purity. If we want to know what is right from wrong, what is pure from not, we need to have uh, we need, we need to, we need to have a basis or a standard. And of course, that is the Word of God. Because if you go out there to the world, if you go out to different countries, different people, different areas, they might have a different idea of what pure and holy is. So for us to be on the same page, we need to have the proper right standard, and that is the Word of God. 2 Timothy, chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says here, All scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, correction, and for training in righteousness. It tells us what is right from what is wrong. So we need the word of God. Ephesians chapter three, chapter 5, verse 3 says here, But among you, there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality. So if you go out there in the world and tell you, and People might tell you, ah, okay na, ginagmay na bitaw na. Okay na nang ginagmay nga landa of pornography. Okay na nang ginagmay nga, uh, in, in, you know, in, uh, in, uh, ungodly relationships and all of these things. Okay na, na, everyone's doing it. There's nothing wrong about that. But what does the scripture has to say? What is acceptable in society may not, may not, no, may not, uh, may, may not be aligned with the scriptures. And it says here that there, there, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality. So really, we need the Word of God because we might not be aware of it, but we might have a different set of values when it comes to purity. And we need to renew our minds on what the Word of God has to say about those. It says here, not even a hint, wala'y bahid, of any sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed because, there, because these are improper for God's holy people. Look, look at that. If you are a Christian, you're a believer, there must not be a hint of these things. That people will not associate you as, ah, see si Kevin, ah, siya mong tig green jokes. Ah, si Ryan, siya mong tig buwat. Ah, no, people should not have those thoughts about you. Whether, this, whether it's acceptable in your workplace, in your campus, in your neighbors, or your barcada, if it is not acceptable to the word of God, then we will not do so. And we will not subscribe or follow it. We look to the word of God. God's word is the key naman to renewing our minds. All right, okay, you, you realize that we... You've been doing something that is not acceptable to the standards of God, that is not aligned to the Word of God. Now, how can you change your mind? How do you turn from that? Well, God's Word is the key to renewing our minds. Romans 12, verse 1. 
I appeal you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. God's word helps renew our mind. It transforms our mind uh, from, 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 from our previously wrong mindsets. Next, God's word washes us from impurity. It actually cleanses us, uh, cleanses our lives in a spiritual sense. Like in Ephesians 5 verse 26, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. So, so God's word cleanses us in a spiritual sense from impurity. It purifies us. God's word, and man, this, is very, this is very important. God's word is a refuge against temptation. All of us encounter temptations one way or another. Tomorrow, the next week, we will encounter these things. And what's interesting is Jesus himself also encountered temptation. But look how Jesus was able to resist temptation. It says here in Matthew 4, verse 3 to 4, The tempter, the devil, came and said to Jesus, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. All right? It was like, okay, ikaw, if you are si, the Son of God, okay, turn this to bread. But look what Jesus did. Did he simply, you know, try his willpower or something? No, he said, but he answered, it is written, okay? It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus resisted the devil by standing firm on God's word. He quoted scripture. Three times Jesus was tempted, and each time he would quote scripture. Now see, Jesus mismo when he used scripture, how much more us? We need scripture. God's word is a, is a refuge against temptation. Why? Because the devil will try anything and everything to deceive us, to, sed to seduce us. Okay? Re remember, Adam and Eve, remember how the, the serpent you know, tricked, <laughs> tricked uh, Adam and Eve? If they simply you know, remembered what God told them, they wouldn't be deceived. The same thing with us, because we are forgetful. It's easy for us to be tempted if we do not have the word of God. We need the word of God. I mean, if you were Jesus, okay, I mean, if, if, if you're to be tempted, but it, wala ka, wala ka, my remembering a verse, wala ka, my remembering a passage, how will you know what is right from wrong? But if you have the word of God with you, you will be able to sift through, Oy, Mark, mani, this is wrong, this is temptation. Eh? You can resist temptation. God's word enables us to overcome these things. So there are many more, of course, benefits to the Word of God, but these are just some of, some of them. But this palang should tell us of the importance of God's Word in guarding, okay? uh, in guarding our hearts, uh, in, 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 in enable us to live a pure and holy life. Now that we've seen the importance naman, of God's Word towards purity, the next thing naman, is how? How can we take heed how, according to the Word of God? How should we approach this path that we are able to live a pure and holy life using the word of God? How can we appropriate it? Okay, two things for us to remember. Okay, firstly, we need to have the right attitude and take on certain actions. So, firstly, the right attitude. In Psalms 119, verse 10 and 11, we see here, you know, the, the, the psalmist attitude, his per perception towards the word of God. And this is important. In verse 10, it says here, the psalmist said, wrote, wrote, or writes, rather, With my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Now, look at that first part. The writer, or the psalmist writes, With my whole heart, I seek you. Okay, here was the psalmist okay, declaring his dedication to God. For the psalmist, trying to, you know, uh, trying to read the word of God or store it, okay, or for him, the word of God, that's a devotion to it. It wasn't just some simple, it was just some task, a to-do list. He's not doing this out of duty lang. But there's a sincere devotion to it. There's, there's a longing to it. Because he says, with my whole heart, I seek you. But every time you seek something, when your heart is there, but you love that thing or, or, or whatever is going to get past ni mo. It's valuable to you. It's important to you. When you say you, you, you've sought it with your heart, sa mga, na, sa mga, sa mga nag-experience, so craving ninyo, di ba nakatay na mo, nag-crave mo, nga itong mong Valencia Jude, nangita mong lechon, but you try to seek it with all your heart, nangita juga itong crispy lechon, nibiyahe juga, na, 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 you did all the efforts you could do. In the same way here, this writer says that he, he sought God with all his heart, with this 
with his emotions, with his devotion. This verse reminds us, that, reminds us that Scripture was no mere textbook, no mere words to the psalmist. It was how he sought and met God. Spurgeon writes that his heart had gone after God himself. He had not only desired to obey his laws, but to commune with his persons, to commune with God. Because for the psalmist, the word of God, of course, is his avenue to being in the presence of God, to, to, to worship God, to hear from God, to commune with God. The same thing with us believers. When we read the word of God, it's not just reading a textbook, like textbook in uh, nursing, sa engineering, in mong physics textbook or something. No. The word of God is not just some book. Remember, in, in, in Romans 12, okay, the word of God, uh, Romans, uh, yeah, in, in the book of Romans, uh, the word of God is, sorry, Hebrews pala, the, the, book, the word of God is living and active. It does something to us. It cuts through flesh, it cuts through bone and marrow. It speaks to our hearts and our minds. There's something that happens when you read the word of God. It's not just mere words or text. It's totally different. And the same thing here, the psalmist devotes or dedicates himself to seeking God and his word. He even says, let me not wonder. We see here his desperation and his dependence on God. He knows that he, and he recognizes, he recognizes his weaknesses in being able to maintain such a dedication. He knows how difficult it is to try and live a pure and holy life, to try and, you know, seek God. He's like, Lord, I, I, I'm seeking you, but Lord, help me. Let me not wonder. This, uh, this church warns us that, you know, it's easy for us to be led astray. The word wander here means to go astray or to commit error. The psalmist is aware how easy it is for us to stray away from a pure life. Sayon na kayo mas lead astray from a pure and holy life, which is why we cannot trust ourselves. We cannot say, kaya na ako ni, uh, willpower lang. Uh, I've, I've known about this, nakadong nabit ako ni. No, we, we need God's grace. The, the psalmist here writes, Lord, let me not wonder. In Psalms 119 verse 12, he even says, Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Lord, tabahin ko, tudluwe ko, Lord. This demonstrates his humility uh, 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 of the psalmist. He even says here naman, okay, because he doesn't want to, be, to, to wander off, he says, I have stored up your word in my heart. I have stored up your word. He sought God with all his heart. He has, he's declaring his devotion, dedication to God. And kanina, he was desperate. Lord, let me not wander off. And in the next verse, the next part of the verse, he says, Lord, I have stored up or kept your word in my heart. Now whatever, now, whatever we store or keep, it is valuable to us, isn't it? If you have like a treasure box, a vault, or some important place you keep your items there, that, that item is important. If you keep something in the bank, that, that, that is important to you. Here, the, for the psalmist, he stored up God's word. Where? In his pocket, in his, in, his, in, his, you know, in his cabinet, in his closet, whatever. No, he says, I have stored your word in my heart. And isn't it that the most important things to us, but we, we keep it close to our hearts. And notice that he didn't just say, I've stored your word in my head. Meaning, we're not just talking about Bible knowledge here or head knowledge, no. Because we want, when it comes to the word of God, we want to be able to apply and obey the word of God. We're not, we're not just talking about info dumps. But we're talking about living a life in obedience to the word of God. And storing his word in our hearts is, in our hearts is important because Outward obedience flows from an inward heart that seeks after God. We are able to, remember, lordship, if you're, for those of you who have gone through one-to-one, -one, lordship begins where? With the heart. So we need the word of God in our hearts. Whatever you deposit or keep in your hearts, mugawastra na siya. It will come out of your hearts. William, William Cowper, okay, uh, has this quote, If you have the word in your mouth only, it shall be taken from you. If you have it on your book, you shall miss it when you need it the, when you need it the most. But okay, if you lay it up in your heart, as Mary did the words of the angel, no enemy shall ever be able to take it from you, and you shall find it in a comfortable measure in your time of need. So we need to store the word of God in our hearts, not just have it in our phones, not just have it in our minds, but we need to have it in our hearts. It's integrated. It's something that we know through and through. And, you know, his main reason for doing this, why he wants to store God's word, is that he says, that I might not sin against you. Again, going back to his desire of wanting to live a pure and holy life. 
when we delight in God's law and have it deep in our hearts like a priceless treasure, our steps okay, will not falter, will not be led astray. Psalm 37, verse 30 to 31. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and his tongue speaks justice. The law of his God is in his heart, and, and it says here, his steps do not slip. It's a slide. It's a wander off. It's a lead astray. Church, if we want to be able to live a pure and holy life, we need to store the word of God in our lives. It has not just in our heads, but in our hearts. We need to store the word of God in our, in our hearts. Now, how do we do that back? We've looked through the past verses. We've seen the devotion and dependence of the psalmist. Now, now that we've known the right attitude towards God's word, that we should treasure it. But no, we should long to, you know, to read God's word and treasure it as the psalmist wrote. That is vitally important for us. Knowing now that, how can we store the word of God? What can we do back? Let me share three things for us. Firstly, declare God's word. Psalms 119 verse 13, with my lips, I declare all the rules of your mouth. Okay? Declare simply means to recount or to speak. I know many of us are, are, are we're more fond of reading the word silently. I'm more of that as well. But when I was reading this, you know, I realized and I was rem reminded strongly, uh, you know what? There is importance and value in speaking the word of God. And you know, in, in, that the, when we read it, we should also not, not just silently read it, but also speak the word of God. Say it, declare it. To the psalmist, declaring God's word was another part of his relationship and love for God. And one of the best ways to recall something, for those of you who have gone through exams, board exams, remember your, your review days. What did you do to try and remember those things that you you man? You would speak it. If you had a roommate, you would recite some equations, Sa mga, sa, mga, sa mga important terms. The same thing with the Word of God. One of the best ways to recall something important is through speaking about it. If you ever try to remember something, you try to speak it about the same thing with the Word of God. If we want to recall, if we, if we want it stored in our hearts, we need to declare God's Word. Our thoughts become easier to remember when they are spoken out loud instead of passive or silently processing. And the same with storing God's word, declaring God's word with our speech and with all our hearts helps us guard it better. When we declare his word, we become transformed and are empowered to do his will. So we need to declare God's word. Chris Taylor said, mate, declare God's word. Okay, so speak God's word. I pray that, you know, that, that the next time when you, when you audibly hear the, 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 the word of God being spoken, it's not just here's a Sunday, it's not just a victory group, Nino, or when you do one-to-one, -one, but in your own home. Where you are, when you, when you do your quiet times, you would speak the word of God. Hebrews 4.12, again, because the word of God is not just text. It's not just words. It is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Kaya nga, diba, the, 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 the apostle Paul wrote that, I am not ashamed of the gospel. He would preach the gospel because when he would preach it, it is the power of God for salvation. Whenever the word of God is spoken, uttered, okay, not just for the sake of memorizing it, but you know, it, it does something to us. Dilin siya basta text or words lang. The next one is meditate on God's word. Yes, you speak God's word, but meditate on it as well. Psalms 119, verse 15. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. The word fix means, means to look upon your ways. Before Okay, now, to qualify, when we say meditate on God's word, some of you might think, ah, katong makita na ako sa mga, you know, mga, ano ba, mga Eastern style meditation. Kano mag, mm, mm. <laughs> Kano mangyana? That kinds of meditation, uh, empty your mind, make it blank, peace, inner peace, inner peace. Okay, remember ko kung Fu Panda. Dili ka na nga meditation ng pasabot na to. In fact, it's the total opposite. On the Eastern style of meditation, it's, no, you empty your mind, you remove everything, all thoughts. But here, when we, when we say meditation, okay, it means to fill our minds with the Word of God. Okay? When, we meditate on God's, when we meditate on God's Word, because not, not an object that we meditate on, we fix our eyes okay, on His ways, our minds are not empty. Okay? Our minds are filled with the Word of God, His ways, and it displaces what is there, what shouldn't be there. So in other words, to meditate on God's Word is to think about it continually. Because, when, because for the psalmist, 
before this word was hidden in his heart, it was first received in his mind. Of course, yagi mo na sa mind. I mean, asa man yung ears, asa man yung eyes, if na read niya, but it passes through our minds. But the psalmist heard and read the word of God and thought about it continually. Contemplating on it, thinking about it, until it became ingrained in both his mind and his heart. Until, you know, it was not just some head knowledge na. But it's, it was something that was deeply hidden in his heart. So it's the same thing with us. When we meditate on God's word, we fill our minds with his word. Truly meditating on God's word results in us remembering it and having a deeper understanding about it. So it, it could be simple as this. When you read the word of God, let's say as simple as John 3.16. You've heard about it. You've seen stickers of it. You've, 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 you've heard of people you know, mention it. Let's say you read about it. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. All right. Now, think about it for the rest of the day. Not just after, not just during your quiet time. Think about it. When you're doing nothing, when you're driving, when you're eating, when you're, when you're, when you're doing chores, when you're seemingly mundane, I don't know, important, think about the Word of God. Contemplate on it. No matter how seemingly familiar with, with familiar you are with the verse, think about that. Okay, for God so loved the world. Hmm, wow, God, you know, how love ni God and world. What did He have to? What did He have to send this one only son? Ano man, chew on it. If you if you've seen you know cows uh, when they would eat, di ba? Kami mga baka when would eat grass, di ba? Kama de ano man sige usap ang mga baka. This this lang mahuma kaon. Lantaw ka lang sigra magkaon from morning till night. They're constantly you know, uh, biting on something, chewing on something. Because, because that's how they would digest the word food. They would chew on it, they would swallow it in their, in their stomach, and guess what? They would regurgitate it back to their, <laughs> to their mouths and chew it again until fully my digest nila. That's how they, they would do it. Now, in a similar way, we can do the same with the Word of God when it says meditate on God's Word. Chew on it with your mind. Think about it. Contemplate on it. What does it mean? But honey, ask questions about it. And as you do so, you will grow in, your, grow in your understanding and appreciation of God's Word until it's no longer just head knowledge. It's, it's no longer just Bible trivia lang, But it will be hidden in your heart. Okay, so when you read God's Word, don't, don't just take it na parang... Uh, remember, remember mo, like, like, like before, sa past in you, when, we, when you would look at the horoscope, na, ah, mo niya akong fortune today. Ah, okay, okay na ko. Sometimes we have that approach to the Word of God. Ah, mo niya sa Word of God. Okay, okay na ko. <laughs> and I'll go on the rest of my day. Then malimta na to. No, contemplate. Think continually about the Word of God. I know someone before na uh, he, he was contemplating on one chapter for the entire week. Muna sige, hinabalik-balik niya, o read and think about. Because that's how you know, seemingly inexhaustive ang Word of God. Parang grabe ka deep ang Word of God. Hindi mo mahuman. O meditate on God's Word. Even if you read it time and time again. Last, last, last thing I want to share is delight in God's Word. You, we, you've declared God's word, meditate on it, but of course, very much important is to delight in God's word. Psalms 119 verse 14 says, In the way of your testimonies, I delight as much as in all riches. The word delight there, okay? That, that, that phrase, it, it roughly means I will skip about and jump for joy. Remember the moments that I jump for joy, ka? for some of you, perhaps you know, you were told uh, you passed the board exam, uh, or you know, uh, you got married, or you got engaged, and you jumped for joy. I know someone who jumped for joy. Uh, or, or whatever, but you won, the, uh, you won something. You, you got a prize. You passed an exam. Whenever something good happens to you, but you rejoice. You delight in it. Here, okay, the psalmist says that when it comes to God's testimonies, His word, He delights the same level as much as in all riches. If someone, if someone were to give you a million pesos, how many of you would rejoice with that? Okay, honestly, we we would be happy if we, you know, if someone were to bless us with that amount. But guess what? The psalmist wrote, uh, just like with those witches, with your word, Lord God, I delight in it. I rejoice in it. Ang delight niya is as if muambak na siya skalified. That's how much he enjoys the Word of God. Just as we treasure and give attention to important things and people, we can delight in God's Word and His testimonies. And here's the thing. We remember better the things that give us delight. Maybe you remember much better the things that, that that's given you joy, the important milestones in, milestones in your life. Seemingly, grabe ka joyful or happy ka. 
Things that give you delight. Diba, remember nimo ang favorite food nimo nga every time mo kaon ka malipay ka. Ang, ang favorite place to go vacation nimo every time you, you think about it or you go there malipay ka. Well here for the psalmist what gave him delight is the word of God. God's word. When it says your testimonies, okay? He says nga, muna naga, ang will ni God is what delights him. Job 23 verse 12, okay? Helps us understand as well. Job, 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 sorry. Job says, I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. For Job, mas importante pa ang words ni God than his daily bread, than his daily sustenance. Here is something that's more important, more vital. And not just important to us, but may we delight and enjoy the word of God. Because if we simply you know, go on reading, try to meditate God's word, but we're not enjoying it, there's something wrong with us. Because to be able to worship God, to be able to, be able to honor God, it's not just do things for Him, it's to delight in Him. To, to enjoy Him and His presence. God's word is more important than anything else we could ever have or own. When we approach God's word with the right attitude, and an open heart, we will be able to understand, follow, and remember what it says. My hope and my prayer, church, that we would not only, you know, strive to read and meditate on God's word, but we would delight on God's word. We would enjoy reading God's word. If you enjoy coming into the service, hearing the word of God being preached to you, may you enjoy reading it for yourselves, speaking it, declaring it for yourselves, and meditating on it yourselves. May we enjoy all that, that involves the Word of God. Last few things, okay? What happened? What was the result in Psalms 118 verse 16? The, the psalmist writes, I will delight in your statutes. He delights again. And he says, I will not forget your Word. Storing God's Word helps us remember it and apply it in our lives. Doing so will cause us to obey Him and delight in all His ways. May, may we, may, when we store God's word in our heart searches, what happens to us? We will not forget. And when we remember the word of God, we will be able to you know, have all those benefits. All those things we talked about a while ago. Knowing right from wrong. Being able to resist temptation. Being, having our minds renewed. All these are important when we have the word of God. And I want to end with this. I'm talking about the importance of God's, storing God's word. Matthew 15 verse 18 to 19 says, but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. So here's the thing. If the Word of God is not stored in the heart, then this is what will come out of us. Our hearts are like sponges. So if we're not storing God's Word in our hearts, if we were to squeeze out our hearts, if difficulties happen, challenges happen, if temptations occur, then what will come out are those things. But if we store God's heart in our uh, God's word in our hearts, then what will come out is God's word. In the same way that Jesus was able to resist temptation or overcome temptation through the scriptures, likewise, God's word would, would overflow from our hearts. Psalms 119 reminds us to hide God's word in our heart, to recite it aloud to study it and reflect it and not forget it. To end, I want to say this to us. I want to leave with us a question. What occupies your heart? What occupies your heart? What is deeply hidden in your heart? Is it God's word or something else? If you would do a heart check right now, you know, scan it yourself, what occupies your heart? What is in the inner, innermost parts of your heart? If it is not the Word of God, then it's about time we, we have it renewed. It's about time that we, we take on the same attitude with the psalmist. To seek God with all our heart and to treasure, to store up His Word in our hearts. That in doing so, we will be able to live a pure and holy life. Let me just pray for us, church. Father, we thank you for your word. That Lord, you did not leave us to fend for ourselves. You did not leave us to try and figure out things on our own. But Lord, you gave us your word. Lord, I pray that we would have the same desire and delight as, as the psalmist, Lord God. That Lord, when we, when we talk about your word, 
ganahan Lord God na mo, mo do other activities Lord God all the more when it comes to your word Lord God may we have the same enjoyment desire may we have the same discipline may we learn Lord God to, to love to read your word meditate your word and as we do so would result in delight in your word Lord God and as we do all these things may we store your word in our hearts Lord God and by doing so, we will be a people able to live a pure and holy life the way you want us to live, Lord, through your word. Lord, for all of us here today, Lord God, Lord, we even repent and we're sorry for the times, Lord God, that we have neglected or been too familiar, Lord God, with your word, Lord God, that, Lord, we have not, we have not taken enough time to spend time with your word. Lord, I pray that we would be a people, Lord God, that would, long and dedicate our, our schedules for your word like that lord we would we would not bump it off or shrug it off but lord we would say no I, we need the word of god may we be a people who would treasure your word like god and store it in our hearts lord we thank you we give you all the glory and the praise in jesus name amen and amen Let's give us a clap of praise for that can we all just stand and end this with a prayer Just lift our hands before God. Father, we thank you for today. We could gather in prayer and worship and hearing of your word, Lord God. And Lord, I pray for your people, Lord God. May they go out there, Lord God. May they experience your grace, your mercy, Lord God, firsthand, Lord. And Lord, may, may, they, may they continue to grow in their Bible reading, Lord God, Bible, in their Bible memorization, Lord God, and all those things of your word. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you everyone. We'll see you next week.